was, there was a bit of an academic interest um, due to studying the AMA at the time um, and looking at some of the obligations that we're supposed to be living up to under um, UN and European policy on um, how women are represented. Um, but largely, I've been influenced more by just my own growing sense of dislocation with what I see around me every day um, in terms of how women are depicted, how they're described and talked about. Um, so it's, I suppose for me, a sense that um, young women in particular are starting to maybe um, fight back a little bit against what we've been sold um, by the media, and by advertising, um, by popular culture in general, about um, this new liberation that we're um, apparently all enjoying as we kind of strut around like pussycat dolls or whatever it is we're supposed to do. Um, so there was a particular incident that really kicked it off for me, as I suppose everybody has when they start to come to um, activism around these issues. And for me, it was an advertising campaign um, by a company up north called Ulstertrainer.com. It was an online second-hand car sales place. And um, they, these billboards su suddenly appeared all over Belfast that were just a giant pair of boobs um, with the tagline, nice headlamps, what are you looking for in a car? I wanted to try, I meant to bring a copy of it to stick up on the screen, but at half six this morning when I was rushing out to the it didn't happen. But um, I'm sure you can imagine, it's kind of just cut off at the neck and just below the breast. So again, you know, completely faceless, dehumanizing, just the, the body part and that direct comparison to um, an object, a car. So um, at the time I didn't have a blog up and running, but I was desperate to try and get people talking about this. Um, and so I used Facebook. And um, started to get people looking at how we could challenge us. We as a voice of objection against this. I think because it was a local firm, we were particularly you know, keen to try and say something about it. Um, because we thought we could have real influence you know, in something that's happening from within our own community. So, um, we got people organised to contact the Advertising Standards Authority and go through that whole ridiculously long overdrawn process of complaining and making a case for it and all that. And in the end, the ad was, um, the writing that they said was that it should be withdrawn. Um, it was such a blatant example of, of objectification like that you know, there was no argument there. Um, so it was after that incident then that I started to blog because people had been so invigorated by that. There were 44 complaints in the end, and I know a good lot of those came from our little kind of Facebook campaign because so many people were coming on saying, I just set the complaint off, I just did it. So um, we had kind of the beginnings of a bit of a critical community of people there. Um, and so the idea for the blog for me initially was that it would be a community blog with lots of different contributors that people would um, sort of organize and share their thoughts. I was inspired by. Um, a metaphor I've read in an academic paper I've been looking at in MMA. I can't remember now exactly who to attribute this to. I think it was Laurel Weldon, maybe, but um, she used the metaphor of the, the jigsaw in terms of women's representation. She was talking about political representation, but um, this really hit home with me. Women don't all have the same experiences of life, and we all have our own piece of the jigsaw. And if each of us brings our piece to the table, then we can slowly start to put together this picture that is shared experience. So um, that really was in my mind when I was starting to blog up, just that people would bring their piece and we would start to look at what women's shared experience really looks like. Um, as it turned out, it didn't really go down that route. And I think confidence played a part in that, as we've heard already. There were loads of women who I went to and said, would you write about that for the blog? You know, we'd have chats in the pub and I would say, would you just throw together like a few hundred words on that and I'll stick it up on the blog, because what you said there was great. And it was always like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you, I'll it, and it never really materialised. And some of that might have been my fault as well, because I tend to write very long sort of <laughs> <laughs> dissertations instead of short, snappy blog posts. So I'm sort of looking at that in a minute about how to maybe change the tone of the blog a bit so it is more inviting for people to contribute. But um, Anyway, that was kind of the thinking behind it. I've used it since then to discuss advertising, pop culture, music, um, films, lads mags come under scrutiny quite a lot, um, porn, rape culture, um, 
attitudes that are expressed through maybe our kind of local um, rape prevention awareness raising things, all of that stuff, anything where women are being discussed um, or depicted and it's on a billboard or it's on a leaflet or it's on your television, we try and use um, the blog to discuss that. Um, just all the messages you know, that are within that, I try and use the blog to critique those, to try and pull them apart a wee bit um, and to look at the impact that they have. So my main aim with it is to, as I said, encourage people to engage in that conversation and to develop their own critical lens. So there are a lot of people out there using the internet to just kind of complain about all the things they don't like or agree with. And I never wanted to kind of fall into that trap because um, you've got a very limited influence then and just kind of appeal to the people who agree with you. Um, so I think it's more important that we try and use the internet to encourage people to think for themselves, develop their own critical lens um, as they consume sort of the media and all the different aspects of our culture. 